Yeah, well, it's a nice cool morning. It's too cold to load the truck for deliveries yet, so I've got till 7, 7.30 to do some stuff here. Um, just wanted to show you this hole here I had to chisel in this. Now, <clears throat> I didn't get into the clapboards that bad. Um, I will have, this right here is the edge of your sapwood. So I did get into it some. Getting this nail out. Somebody drove a galvanized spike in there. Um, it's the only thing I've found so far. Once I get it between the spools, or, uh, you know, centers, <clears throat> I'll rotate it some, put this up top, and get that bottom side. But right now, um, I gotta get out my big saw. <laughs> That's after I cut the end of that spike off with the saw. It weren't cutting good. Um, I gotta go shatting things. And then I'll get out a crayon. I'll do some measuring. We'll put a center right in here. And that right there from here down to this edge right here is eight foot six. I actually can go to there because this is going to get chewed off. So I'm going to measure between centers and get the most. I think I can take eight foot seven. So I'll, I'll cut it off somewhere right here. And uh, it's a pretty good sized log. Um, I don't want to set that there because I'll lose it. Put it in my pocket. This log right now is, uh, well, inside the back is 27 inches. 26 and a half. So it's not a wicked big log, but it's a nice one. They have to be about 22 inches um, overall to get a raw clapboards out of. This here will make a nice raw clapboards. Get close to, uh, I don't know, 85, 90. Probably 80, 85. Usually if they're about 22, you'll get around 70 some. So anyway, yeah. So that's it. I'm going to shut this off. We'll go get the big saw going. As you can see, these, this thing has uh, hit a rock here at some point, been into gravel. Um, and it's never been sharpened yet, I don't believe. Because the reason I say that is you can see the gap up there between the tooth and the top of the... It hasn't had a file in it, I don't believe. Or else somebody did it with a machine, if it has been filed or ground. But anyway, yeah, so this is the biggest saw that I own. It's a uh, 372. Anyway, we're going to see if we can get this old girl running. It's one of them things you don't use it very often, but um, we'll do some filing on her. I'll bring you back here when I'm done. Yeah, we're going to take this saw and... Uh, we're gonna make a cut here because where one side was numbed off so bad on the teeth, I want to see if it cuts straight before I go into the regular cut.
Now we've got to do some measuring. I'll be back in a minute. Well, we'll see where eight foot six comes. Oop. Come on. Get it hooked where I want. Yep, about a quarter inch inside the back right there. So, we'll fire this thing up again. Should be about eight, five and a half, something like that. We'll see just what we come out with. Yeah, eight, five and three quarters. Um, that side there that wasn't cutting as good, it drifted a little bit to the right. But that's all right. I think we can still shake it in. Yeah, this side here is perfectly straight, so. We'll uh, go get our measuring markers and find our point for our center. Well, we finally got this old girl cut off. So this end here is going to get a one inch hole in it. And this right here is the sapwood. Yeah, let's see, right about there. And well, it's hard to see down there, it's right about there. And over here, it appears it's in a little further. But it's hard to tell actually on that spot right there. <laughs> you give it an hour and it'll be have pitch on it. Yeah, it should be, uh, it actually looks like it's way back there. It's a little wider growth rings on this side. Yeah, it's right there. Let me see if I look real hard. It's hard to see. So, we'll take the middle of that. 26, be 13. Up. Oh, make it a little better. And the middle of this one here is 25. Here we'll call it 25. So that's going to be 12 and a half. So that right there should be the center, or pretty damn close. Pour that full length, and then it doesn't bottom out on you, because the wedges come in the side of it. And that's what actually turns a log. So now we'll go to the other end and put a half inch hole in the other end. We got a bunch of wood here in the way down here, but we'll manage. 
So that right there is the end of the sap wood. That right there is the edge of the sap wood. Sap wood's a little creamier looking, a little whiter. So gotta go get the tape measure. That is 22 and a half. So that's going to be 11 and a quarter at the center. Okay, now 22, we're going to hit 11. That right there. Now, I don't know if you can see that. I'll show you the shake that's in this wood. For something that ain't been cut very long. I don't know if it'll bother the clapboards or not. Um, and I don't know as you can see it either, but where is that crack? See that crack right there? That crack goes all the way out from right there, all the way down there, goes all the way out there. Pretty big crack, but we're going to be cutting our clapboards out here and out here. And if it does interfere with one, it'll just be maybe one or two. So, yeah, we'll put a half-inch hole on this side. Won't be much to that. You don't even need a flushing a bit for that, but that's what I got on it. But regular bids work just fine. That then he's ready to go on the mill when I get back from delivering. And I'll show you where those are going. So the inch hole goes right over this spindle. Like I say, we got to drill in all the way so that it doesn't bottom out on this and not keep tight on these drives here. And uh, that's what drives the log. And then down on this end, I've got it backed way back in, but there's an inch pin right there. A half inch pin, I mean. So, yeah. Between right here and that end of that pin is just eight foot six and maybe a half. So we should have room enough to get it in. So I'm going to go load some plants, make a delivery. Um, not that I don't trust people, but... We'll put the saw in the barn, and uh, I'll be back in a little while. Well, yeah, that right there is how that one goes in. You can see those dogs drive, and I'll have to keep tightening it. Every rotation I make, it'll wiggle and go back in a little further. And, of course, you can see, I'll show you on the other end, it's easier to see. You know, it's pretty easy to find the edge of the sapwood on pine. You know, I had it about right where I drew the lines. It's basically just a difference in color and uh, no pitch here at all. But when uh, we started there, you can see that we didn't have it in quite far enough and it started sliding up with the fibers. But we'll uh, walk that in a little further and she'll hold up. So, this right here is the business end, it's homemade. Um, the plates, they all have a half inch bolt welded on the back of them. It's like a key, so it can't come out. And then the Allen head bolt holds them in. And they're 3 8 thick, and they're, uh, I think they call it AR plate. They're real tough, abrasive resistant. But anyway, we'll see here if we can't knock this loose. I don't have the belt on, so it may not work just perfect. Oop. Get that out here. Should have got a different hammer. That one's all grease. <clears throat> yep. I'm gonna put you down here so I can get this. travel with it we take the nut and tighten it up a little bit so that it won't fall off in the road ok 
Okay. And that goes on like so. <clears throat> Let's see here, yeah, it goes that way. Yeah. Okay, we'll just put that back on. Beautiful. Yeah. <clears throat> now I got to go down in the shop and I've got to make me a collar. I don't know where this collar has gone. But there's supposed to be a collar on here. I'm not going to make a video of making it. But that collar right there keeps this from traveling sideways like this. Because if it travels sideways, it gets out in the way of the wheel. Which only misses it by about, you know, an eighth of an inch. So, yeah, I got to make that. So, we're not going to do any sawing tonight. Um, but, it's basically ready to go. So, anyway, I'll bring you back in a little bit when I see what I got made. Well, I got the belt on. I made a collar that was missing. I uh, junked an old insulage chopper that was all busted up and I saved the collars off it. Came in handy. That's what pack rat does for you, you know. So anyway, yeah, I was stealing power off the belt as it goes by for the carriage movement. <clears throat> Runs up, goes around the cut ahead pulley. And all I need now, tomorrow, is a tractor up here. Probably the John Deere A. Um, that's what I've always ran the uh, mill with. So I'm pretty much ready to go. I haven't had the tractor out yet this year. Um, I doubt it will fire right off. You know, usually you have to frig with the points and stuff like that. But um, I suppose just, to, just for the heck of it, we could walk down and see. We'll see what happens. Yeah, we'll see if there's any fuel in the tank. Yeah, half inch. Won't run it for long, but it'll start it. Um, yeah, we'll see if it'll run. Just for the fun of it. A little bit of fuel. Clutch is out. Neutral. We'll, uh, I don't know where the good place is to put you guys. Stack up a few buckets, right? Of course, got my hands all shit now, but. Yeah. We'll see what happens. Okay, 
two, put the half away. to take fuel to run I had a funny feeling I said no nah, I'm not gonna go out in the road I'm gonna go inside of the mailboxes just in case and it just as soon as I turned she quit so anyway I'm glad I ain't sitting out in the road I had a sneaky suspicion we'll uh, grab five gallons here and dump into them I'll be back in a minute as you can see, the sun's going down. But I got the old girl running again. It ran out of gas out there, course, and I fired her up, and all's well in the world. Um, so anyway, we're running across three pulleys. I thought that was a good idea when I did it. And I've had several people tell me that you can't never align three pulleys, but you know, they go on there slick on the heck, and I've never had a problem with it, you know, not tracking good. Um, I'm not, I'd, I'd start it up and saw it at night, but by the time I go get the grease gun, you know, grease all these things, oil everything that needs to be oiled, it's gonna be pretty near dark. So, but that's how she works. It just steals power right here. Had to put that idler on, because this little bit right here weren't quite enough. You know, it would slip, but. I put an idler off of an old saw table underneath so I actually get 90% of my power right there and I don't have it up quite high enough yet but uh, yeah maybe I do I'm gonna be too high I'll have to uh, let that down a little bit to start it in uh, anyway in the morning I'll either do it in the morning or tomorrow night after supper doesn't really matter but it will saw tomorrow. We will uh, make that denny into a round dowel. And then we'll do what's called rift sawn, which is when the blade's always headed to the middle of the log. Some people call it radially sawn. They're not quarter sawn. Um, quarter sawn is a whole procedure. And uh, this is not quarter sawn. So anyway, um, yeah, we're about ready. Hope you enjoyed. A little setup, getting a little closer. Next one's going to be fun. Hit the like button if you liked it, and don't hesitate to subscribe to see more. We'll talk to you later. Well, a little update on this little piece here. I did have the M going for about 45 minutes. You can see this light brown area on the top. It's about 50 feet down to the base of that. I really, I mean, I got up there where the tractor is, but I spun my way up. It's really too wet on this top, 50, 60 feet. The bottom I can go on pretty nice. Oh, a geese are down there. Just on the edge of that green strip. I don't know if you can see them with the camera or not. But uh, we've also got our kill deer here this year. I haven't actually checked to see if they're still on the nest. Um, 
right over here by this piece of plastic that came off the wood. Whoops, she just hopped off the nest. I guess if she's already off, we'll go take a look. See if there's anything hatched. No. Nope. They're right there. I think you can see them little four eggs. She is right ugly. Here comes the partner. Anyway, we'll get out of here so she can get back on them. It's pretty warm out. It's about 62 or 3. So, yeah. Anyway, they're, they're back this year. Doing well. But I also saw the hawk today. That son of a bitch. He's the one that kills all the little kill deer every year. Last year he got all four of them. And he did the year before. One of these years they'll get maybe a couple of them grown. Yeah, what a night. It's a beautiful night. Anyway, we'll talk to you later. I hope you enjoyed.